how many times must I tell you? You must never put your life on the line for me. Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. We are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs, and Jacques Perrou, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. I do apologize for being late. I was obliged to clear up some urgent business. At last, we meet Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. However, there may be some new developments, but I, I don't know if they are linked to your mother. We have found Elizabeth Adams' body in her room. I'm afraid she was brutally murdered, stabbed several times. Who, who could have done it? That is precisely what I would like you to help us determine, Louis. Duchess Hillsborough informed us that she accompanied you at the beginning of the evening. You apparently bumped into Miss Adams, who wanted to speak to you. We are told you turned her away, and she went away on her own. That's correct. Do you know what she wanted to see you about, by any chance? Not in the least. Pity. The poor child was probably trying to find help. I thought it could wait until tomorrow. Hmm. Apparently not. Louis, I shan't hide the fact that this tragedy puts me in a very delicate situation. I cannot risk upsetting the smooth operation of our next conference. But the case cannot remain unaddressed. I must reassure my guests, and justice will be done. And for that to happen, I must ask for your help. Why is that? You met Elizabeth. You spoke together, I believe. She trusted you. Listen, Louis. Find out who could have committed this murder. I refuse to believe that one of my guests is the murderer. I want to know who is responsible for this. And I trust you. You have my backing. You must stop at nothing. Can I count on you? Of course. H how would you like me to proceed? Maybe you could start by going to the scene of the crime. Elizabeth was attacked in her room. Do you have any suspects in mind, my lord? I spent most of the night talking with Sir Gregory and his eminence Piaggi. So, I think you can remove them from the list of suspects. Monsieur Bonaparte and President Washington left the party after midnight, I believe. They were tired and went up to bed. Can you tell me anything else about what happened? Now, Louis, I wouldn't want to influence you. Get over there and form your own opinion. Right. I'll get over there immediately. Thank you, Louis. Now, once you've finished, come back and let me know your findings. I'll be waiting. And Louis, you've got permission to search through the guests' rooms. They've all been notified and they agree.
The nightmare painted by Fusili in 1781. Great, honey. Carmelite water. Hmm, which four-letter word could open this chest? Hmm, which four-letter word could open this chest?
Dante's Purgatory. Why does your mind presume to flight when you're still like the imperfect grub, the worm before it's attained its final form? Charming. Your Eminence, I imagine that you've heard the news about Miss Adams. Oh, what a tragedy, my son. How could uh, such a thing have happened? That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary last night? Mm. I saw the young French soldier, Bonaparte, I believe, hanging around near Miss Adams' room. But I would not want to get an innocent man into trouble. It's uh, probably nothing. Not to worry, Your Eminence. If he is innocent, then he has nothing to fear. Do you know why Monsieur Bonaparte was hanging around her room like that? Well, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that the dashing young soldier had become infatuated with a fragile young woman who looked a bit lost. But I don't think he got a very warm welcome. Bonaparte and Adams? <laughs> but they didn't even know each other, did they? I couldn't say that. But if I were you, my son, I would talk to Monsieur Peru. You remember how violently he set upon Miss Adams. Oh, don't worry. He's on the list of suspects. Hmm, which four-letter word could open this chest? Hmm, which four-letter word could open this chest? Good day, Monsieur de Richer. Mr. Volner, are you looking for anything in particular? Next to Elizabeth's room? I... I... No, no, I... Uh, nothing special. I'd have thought this is not really the shortest way to get to your suite. Uh, yes, I, I wasn't really looking where I was going. I shall leave you now, sir. I will return to my room.
There are numerous marks on the body. She must have fought like a lion. It couldn't have happened without a lot of noise. There are also a number of old scars. People who scar themselves in this way generally do so to release some kind of psychological suffering. By trying to master the pain, they establish their self-control. Scarring, ugh. Scarring isn't very regular, but they're mostly from old cuts. No sign of bruising on the skull. The only clue is a scar from a previous craniectomy. Poor Elizabeth, she she must have been very young when she went through all that. That's torture. She also has old scars around the neck, maybe mutilations. She bled from the nose. signs of bleeding, but I don't see any traces of bruising. What a strange smell. Laudanum. Certain courtiers use it to get drunk. If taken in large quantities, it can provoke fits of madness. Blood, but no trace of blows on the legs. The corrections of blood streaks caused by the wounds to the thorax show that she was standing when she lost blood. This proves that she was standing when she was assassinated, possibly held by someone or something. More tattoos, similar to those on the rest of her body. I count no fewer than nine wounds on the thorax with a lot of blood. On first sight, I'd say that's what caused her death. Looks as though the wounds were inflicted from a precise angle, as if, as if the murderer was standing behind Elizabeth. Some of these tattoos are veritable works of. What's that? The skin between her breasts is different. Bloody hell! This tattoo was drawn on a page of leather and stitched onto her skin, probably during childhood. The scars are anything to go by. It's the same kind of tattoo as on the rest of her body. No wounds, but blood on the right hand. Nothing on the left except that tattooed symbol. No marks or bruising around the wrists. Doesn't look like she was tied up or held by force. Poor girl bled to death. Whoever left that footprint has boats for feet. That's at least a size 15. Where's a size like that here? Peru? Washington, maybe. The handprint on the handle is really small. I can't imagine a man with a hand that size. It must be from a woman's hand.
blade is short and thin. Well sharpened, apparently. It's covered in blood. Still fresh. The lower part of the handle is unsullied by blood. The murderer gripped the weapon so tight that there's no blood where he held it. The handprint indicates a small and slender hand. A knocked over bottle of wine. What kind of plonk is that? Hey, it's a Bordeaux. That's a Chateau de Brion. It's a great wine. I don't know what's happened to this wine, but it's undrinkable. A chest with a half circle pattern. Tutored hand copied these notes. Looks like a healing method. Well, that's a pity. The writing is barely legible. The clock stopped at 354. If it was smashed during the murder, then I've just established the time of the crime. That would clear Emily de facto because she was still with me at the time. Huh. The talisman that I gave back to Elizabeth. I can't exactly say it brought her good luck. A pentagram. What the hell's been going on here? I wonder if Elizabeth's death has anything at all to do with this pentagram. If a ritual went wrong and degenerated, Elizabeth would probably have been killed in the center of the pentagram, not three meters from here. That's strange. A notebook written in Elizabeth's handwriting. It is written in a mix of several languages. Not too easy to work out. August 24th, 1792. Elizabeth, I am driven to despair and doubt there is any point in writing to you. I'm not even sure you'll receive my letters. Father controls my correspondence more and more. I am certain he filters our exchanges. Thankfully, one of the chambermaids is able to help me get my letters to you. But they still remain unanswered. I often think about you and pray every day be able to hold you tight. We have so much time to make up. I beg you, answer me, please. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. That horrible woman came again yesterday. She spent a long time speaking with father. I didn't understand everything because they spoke in French, but I'm sure they were talking about you. Pistol? Fairly new, I'd say. And judging by the weight of it, fairly light. It's extremely well maintained. The barrel is perfectly clean. It isn't loaded, and well, there's no traces of gunshot residue. I'd conclude that it hasn't been used recently. Hmm. There's a few dried traces of blood on the grip. Difficult to know for sure how they got there. A tribute engraved on the barrel. To the liberators of France. Right. I shall have to find its owner. A piece of fabric. High quality at that. I'd say it's silk. 
Going by the texture and the gray hue, it must come from a, a dress, that kind that women of quality wear. The color doesn't correspond to Emily's black outfits, and Elizabeth doesn't have anything quite like this in her wardrobe. Let's take a closer look. It's a little dirty. It must come from the bottom of the dress where it touches the ground. I recognize that moiré pattern. It's the same as the travel dress my mother was wearing when she left. But why the hell did she come into this room? Vials of laudanum. The label shows that this laudanum comes straight from America. I wonder if Washington's involved. Has Sam uh, finished with this room? Do you know who could have made such a mess of this room? Miss Adams, sir. We were given orders to leave the room as it was, so as not to rush her. Did she have a fight with someone to get the room into this state? Not that I know of, sir. Miss Adams would sometimes throw a tantrum, during which she would destroy anything that came to hand. Lord Mortimer told us not to enter the room. Thanks for that information. You are welcome, sir. Has Sir finished with this room? I know enough now. Thank you. Very well, sir. Sir may return whenever need be. I shall guard the door. President George Washington. Portrait of George Washington. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. My dear George, I'd like to invite you to join me as planned at my place. I have a project to show you. It is time that the United States played a more important role on the world stage. I understand your reluctance of playing with fire. I know your new country is very young, but rest assured that I would do nothing to jeopardize what we have built together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Your friend, William. It looks like a note between Emily and Washington about trade deals. A map of Connecticut. Greetings, William. Mr. President, you can guess why I'm here. Of course. Lord Mortimer has sent me to ask you a few questions about last night. It's... How am I going to tell Elizabeth's father that she's dead? I know, Mr. President. I shall endeavor to find out the truth about this tragedy. I must ask you to help me, though. Please. Find the degenerate pig who did this, Louis. Are 
Are you all right, Mr. President? Are you feeling all right? Oh, don't worry. It's this rotten toothache. What do you expect? Uh, I'm no spring chicken now. I'm talking to all the guests to find out who has an alibi and, well, who doesn't, Mr. President. Can you tell me what you were doing last night so that I can strike your name off the list? I spent the night right here, reading. All night? Exactly. Emily stopped by in the middle of the night, you can ask her. She wanted to talk about some business we have in common. Anything whatsoever to do with Elizabeth? Not at all, Louis. A business matter. Tell me, Mr. President, had you spoken to Elizabeth since your arrival? You know her father. You thought she was dead. No, I didn't. And I believe I'll be taking my remorse with me to my grave. I wanted to, but I didn't know where to begin. You can't blame yourself. You, well, you couldn't have known that her days were numbered. aware that Elizabeth took laudanum? Yes. She came to ask me for some. She had finished her reserve, I believe. Did she tell you why she was so desperate to get some, Mr. President? She said she had terrible migraines that wouldn't go away. More likely for the voices she heard, not the migraines. Do you know why she came to the island? To get help, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that right? Indeed. Sir Gregory suggested to her father that he introduce her to Lord Mortimer to see if he could help her. Yes, Lord Mortimer has a talent for healing, apparently. I'm not surprised Sir Gregory advised her to come. Agreed. Do you know if she had any enemies, Mr. President? Not that I know of. I heard about her altercation with Mr. Perry, but that case was closed, if I'm not mistaken. But if in doubt, I wouldn't leave any door unopened, and I'd go and question your fellow countrymen. Don't worry. Countryman or not, I'm not letting anybody slip through the cracks. Mr. President, we found a footprint at the scene of the crime. Not a dress shoe, I hope. That's all I wear. No, rest assured. It looks like the print of a big ankle boot. A large size, I'd say. Perfect. That should help you, Louis. It's a clue. Monsignor, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Huh, that's me. Duke Manuel Godoy. Napoleon Bonaparte. Hannibal crossing the Alps. Another military success. Why do I get nothing but visions of horror in my room and he gets victory after victory? Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. The Battle of Alexander at Issus, or how Alexander the Great triumphed over King Darius. Yet another one with delusions of grandeur. A 
bicorn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. The Prince by Machiavelli. A perfect read for anyone with a surfeit of ambition. Hmm, that might come in handy. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. French actor Talma is Nero and Britannicus, the last emperor of the Caesar dynasty. There's just one holster in Bonaparte's gear, and the pistol is missing. On the other hand, his cleaning equipment is in mint condition. That's typical of the soldier in him. My dear Napoleon, as previously agreed, I would like to ask you to join us in January on my island to participate in the high society meeting organized for the occasion. We shall be able to continue our discussion about our project for a new order for France. I have a proposition to make to you concerning your wish to put a strong leader at the head of France. I trust you to be discreet as to your coming. See you soon. Lord William Mortimer. Vercingetorix throws down his arms at the feet of Julius Caesar by Royer, two great army chiefs. It's a beautiful weapon, a lovely damask blade. It's marked with the initials of the manufacturer in Versailles. My dearest son, I'm writing to implore you to act quickly. The situation is rapidly worsening here. Paoli continues to steer our motherland, Corsica, toward open warfare between France and England. His men are everywhere. We are obliged to go into hiding and are unable to remain in the same place for more than two days. I wouldn't be surprised if they targeted us soon. Make haste, my son. You hold our destiny in your hands. Your loving mother, Maria Letizia Bonaparte. Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. Someone saw you not far from the victim's room. Can you tell me what you were doing exactly, please? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. I wanted to warn her to be careful. You see, on the night of my arrival, I saw someone leaving her room in haste, and I wanted to speak to her, to warn her. Unfortunately, the young lady slipped through my fingers each time. Now I know why. She had every reason to be worried. What an idiot I was not to insist. I could have helped her. I've been studying him for a while now, and I don't think he was lying. Yet, I'm surprised how easy it was for me to read him. It must surely be his military side. I wish they all could be like that. My investigation would be finished already. Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed, it is deeply regrettable. 
Lord Mortimer asked me to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Can you tell me who was present at the game, please? Well, there were Lord Mortimer, President Washington, and Sir Gregory. Thank you. Ah, and his eminence, Piaget, as well. Excuse me, I nearly forgot him. Poor soul. Did you notice anything unusual during the evening? Nothing at all. Except the luck of the devil of Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory at cards. Did they win much? Oh la la, monsieur, they cleaned us out more like. But I plan on getting it all back before we leave. Did any of you leave during the game? Not that I know of, monsieur. I didn't exactly spend my time noting the other guests' comings and goings, but I don't think so. Thank you. What time did the game end? I can't say exactly. As for me, I must have stayed until midnight. I was exhausted, couldn't think straight, so I preferred to go up to bed. On your way up to bed, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? No, not in the least. The whole manor was sound asleep. Not really, no. As any good soldier would, I imagine you own a firearm. May I see it? Oh, well, if you really want to, here is my pistol. Don't worry, it is not loaded. Do you have several of these? In Corsica, oui, but not on me when I am traveling. Only a bandit would carry such an arsenal. Thank you. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. Jacques Perru. What do you want from me, Deriche? Greetings. It's fallen to me. Cut that... the crap! Get to the point. We both know why you're here. And have you got anything to tell me? What does it matter? It's too late anyway. Do what you have to do and get out. It's never too late, sir. If you have something to say, now is the time. You don't understand. Everything's already written. It's over. Why is he behaving like the perfect culprit? What is it that's already written? I'm not sure I follow you. No, you don't. Nice decor for a revolutionary tribunal judge's room. Another painting on the Massacre of the Innocents? A pattern with four circles. Dear Monsieur Peru, I'm writing to thank you for the funds you sent. These funds will be crucial for the renovation of the western wing of the orphanage. The children you sent are doing marvelously well, and little Pierre will soon be walking. Some of them still sometimes suffer nightmares about their parents on the scaffold, but I expect they will cease in due course. Should you decide to send us more, please note that another 20 beds will soon be ready. The children and myself will never thank you enough. Long live the Republic. Long live France. Sister Marie Allen. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. The 
massacre of the innocents, but by Van Harlem. I think that Mortimer likes to play mind games with his guests. Great, honey. The Massacre of the Innocents by Rubens. A bit gloomy. Guess my room is not that bad. Dear friend, please come and join us. We must meet about the ongoing operations in Paris. A boat will be waiting for you in Calais and will take you to Dover in England. From there, a carriage will take you to the port of Tintagel, where a frigate will be waiting for you and other guests, so you can meet up with me on my island as quickly as possible. I await your arrival, Lord William Moore. Golden elixir. Hmm. I'll keep it for later. Records of the police. Notes intended for the police lieutenant of Paris. It's a list of people under surveillance in Paris. And there's some well-known names on it. This is valuable information. This shouldn't be lying around. Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. Let's get right to it. Are you Elizabeth Adams' murderer? That is for you to prove, if I'm not mistaken, boy. You weren't expecting me to do all the legwork for you, were you? Lazy man. I'd like to talk about the letter you're writing. What woman is it addressed to? Who says it's a woman? I'm not saying any more. There's no point you insisting. All right. Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. I know you were at the scene. We will save a lot of time if you just tell me what happened. You know nothing at all. Enlighten me then. For now, I have your footprint in a pool of blood. That's right. The only thing you can prove is one of my boots was at the scene. Congratulations, you've wrapped up the investigation. All right, have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. You were armed the night of my arrival. Can I see your weapon? No. You do realize you're not helping, don't you? You're making it worse for yourself. Goodbye, sir. We shall meet again. Probably. Johann von Wulner. The 
the signs of obscurantism. Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. The sorrows of young Werther. There's a handwritten text signed by von Werner on this first page. Dear Elizabeth, I know that this book is but a small token compared to the delightful moments you gave me, but I hope that this will nonetheless keep the memory alive. Your ever obedient servant. So, Volner had a relationship with Elizabeth, but that's hardly surprising given his fondness for the occult. The Alchemist as a Young Man. signs of the zodiac. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. A chest lock with a four-letter code. Surely a word close to the owner's heart. Golden elixir. A table of alchemical symbols. Someone circled the zinc symbol. A chest locked with a four letter code. Surely a word close to the owner's heart. Alchemist is an old man. Amber. What can I do for you, Duriche? Monsieur, Lord Mortimer has appointed me to investigate the tragedy that befell us last night. Oh, yes. It's horrible. Yes. How can I help, Monsieur? Where were you last night? In my room. I read a few ancient manuscripts before going to bed. But I didn't stay up long. I was tired. Thank you kindly. Excuse me for asking, but did you know Miss Adams? Oh, she... Uh, not really, to tell the truth. No. I found the Verter dedication, signed by your hand, monsieur. Would you like to change your version now? Be careful, Duriche. Don't push your luck. My relationship with Miss Adams was pure and has nothing to do with you. Well, continue playing the detective as you see fit. But if I find the bastard who did that to Elizabeth, I will... Yes! I would have preferred a simple response, but I see I have my answer now. Please, tell me a little more about the nature of your relationship. That is a personal matter, monsieur. Yes, that is true. So, tell me. All right. It was passion. That's why we couldn't stay together. It scared her. I get the impression that your romance was over. Am I right? 
So? What does it matter to you? I would never have attacked her, if that's what you're insinuating. Who put an end to the relationship? You or her? It was her. It was her. But what does that matter? We both agreed. Exactly how long had you been seeing her? I have no reason to answer you. I see. Is that what you want me to tell Lord Mortimer when he asks what I found out? It's... it's only been a few weeks. You loved her, didn't you? That is none of your damn business. Your feelings betray you, sir. So what? Yes. I loved her. Like a moth loves the flame of a candle. That's why we could never be together. We finished. I'll have a look around and then take my leave. Do whatever you have to do. President George Washington. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Huh, that's me. Duke Manuel Godoy. Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Monsieur Jacques Perru. Johann von Wulner. I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. I'm sorry, my lord, but I don't have any evidence conclusive enough to allow me to name the culprit with certitude. Really? I see. Well, that's your decision, Louis, and I accept it. Given the distinguished guests and the sensitive political issues involved at the conference, I trust you'll leave me to conclude the case in my own way. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother, Louis. She seems to be making every effort to steer clear of your guests. What, what do you mean? For the past few weeks, my mother's been playing cat and mouse, if you will. I don't know why, but it wouldn't surprise me to learn that she's trying to avoid someone. The question is, who? 
And in your opinion, would she be the cat or the mouse? Knowing my mother, she would be the cat. That doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? I knew about your mother's activities and yours in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday, during lunch. I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. Yet he told me that you had spoken and that you hadn't been able to reach an understanding. Hmm. That's putting it mildly. Monsieur Bonaparte is one of those guys who only understands people who think like he does. Ah, I see what you mean. He is indeed rather inflexible when it comes to certain subjects. But I am still of the opinion that you can manage to get along. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. Did my mother intend to finance a war? I'm not sure that I follow. No, your mother's aim was not so much to partake in a war, but rather to make Monsieur Bonaparte accountable. France is in turmoil, and having support of a military man can often come in handy, Louis. You'll see. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see. Ah, thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what is said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there an off-the-record reason why your mother came here? If only my mother had trusted me, but she remained very mysterious. I'd have been delighted to answer your question. Is this usual for her? As head of the Order, secrets are her bread and butter, as you can imagine. That said, it's the first time she hasn't let me in on the reason for her trip. And it intrigues me, to tell you the truth. Well, I'm sure that Sarah will explain everything once she reappears. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? Her not coming back to the manor after so long makes me wonder if she is wary of someone. Well, certainly. But whom? The only ones who were present during her stay were Sir Gregory, Duchess Hillsborough, Mr. Von Bormer, and myself. How did my mother and Duchess Hillsborough get on? Oh, very well, I believe. They spent a lot of time together. Without wanting to exaggerate, I rather got the impression that Emily reminded your mother of herself when she was young. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together, solving the world's problems. You seem to know my mother very well, my lord. What did you talk about together? Oh, as soon as we had a little free time, we liked to share points of view about practically any subject. We would find ourselves embarked on interminable discussions that could go from 
Monsieur Blanchard's flight in a hot air balloon to the Treaty of Jassy, or the adoption of the metric system in France last year, or even Mr. Eli Whitney's invention in the United States. My mother must have undoubtedly taken great pleasure in these exchanges. She always was one to appreciate broadening her knowledge. I'm surprised she didn't get you started on the Crusades. It was her favorite subject. Huh, are you joking? Sarah and I spent entire days together reliving them. It so happens that the Crusades are also my subject of predilection, especially the third. My ancestor distinguished himself brilliantly during the siege of saint jean d'Acre. Unfortunately, my lord, the Crusades are not my chosen field. Well, it doesn't matter. You have plenty of time to learn. Your mother is a very well-read woman. You're quite lucky to have her as a model, Louis. Yes, I know. But I'm still very worried. I must admit, there are worse things to worry about now, Louis. What do you mean? Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. She resurfaced to attack Emma, Emily Hillsborough's twin sister. And she shot her with a pistol. Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. Emily has a twin sister? Who knew my mother? But she playing it, goddammit. That means... My vision on the wharf, it, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? The very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me, but between that and the childhood of Lady Adams, it's, it's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation. Until the day came when she purely and simply disappeared. Where, where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. Hmm. The room is just opposite Mortimer's study. There are burnt papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says, we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. What is this disc? Is 
St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and the play of colors too. Paul facing an ordeal, the curtains of his illusions being raised and receives the light from his savior. Light water will give me a little reprieve. The door appears to be locked on the other side. I heard something fall to the ground. A metallic sound, like, like a key falling to the floor. Open sesame. It's open. chest with the occult symbol representing air. A drawing of the Apostle Matthew, painted by Guido Rini. He's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit, who appears here in the guise of an angel. The New Testament. I guess I'll just come back later. It's Saint John, painted by Guido Rini. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Reni. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. Painting of Saint Mark from the collection of the apostles by Guido Reni. Amber crystals. Saint Paul painted by Guido Rini. Of the four apostles shown in this piece, Paul is the only one who isn't an evangelist. He is the 13th apostle. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange, there's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know, what does that mean? So we have the figure 11 twice underlined and a story of a group of pilgrims who it looks like Paul is speaking to. Maybe it's a code. There, there must be a connection. A text on Paul must be somewhere and it must be associated with the figure 11. But what's the story with these pilgrims? I mean, a connection with the figure maybe? So we have the figure 11 twice underlined and a story of a group of pilgrims who it looks like Paul is speaking to. 
Maybe it's a code. There, there must be a connection. A text on Paul must be somewhere, and it must be associated with the figure 11. But what's the story with these pilgrims? I mean, a connection with the figure, maybe? And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John and Jordan. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jerus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. And so it was that, while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. This book is incredibly precious. I believe this is the book my mother referred to when calling upon the Lord. A volume of the Gutenberg Bible. I guess I'll just come back later. It's St. John, painted by Guido Rini. St. Paul, painted by Guido Rini. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Oh, wait, a note from Mother is carefully folded between the pages here. What does it say? Dear E, I'm glad you found this note. I was afraid the code of the two groups of pilgrims would mislead you. Pick up the package. You know where, and hide it where no one will find it. It's imperative, awaiting your reply, hidden behind the youngest apostle. What? The youngest apostle? What does mother mean by that?
painting looks like it's been taken down recently. What was it my mother said? That she would wait for an answer hidden behind the apostle. Ah, of course. There's something written behind the painting. On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? They should add a companion to their left and three to their right to complete their ranks. I imagine it applies to their code, the one mother set up with the pilgrims. What's this? A group of pilgrims who Paul was talking to, and now John is telling them prophecies? Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and neither tempteth he any man. St. John is the only apostle painted in this gallery who hasn't got a beard. Hey, wait! That means it's him. He's the youngest apostle. Right! This painting is therefore associated with the answer which E had to give to my mother. Now, I just need to know how to recover the answer. It's St. John, painted by Guido Rini. St. John is the only apostle painted in this gallery who hasn't got a beard. 
On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? I guess I'll just come back later. It's St. John, painted by Guido Rini. They should add a companion to their left and three to their right to complete their ranks. I imagine it applies to their code, the one mother set up with the pilgrims. What's this? A group of pilgrims who Paul was talking to, and now John is telling them prophecies? And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Hereby know that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his Spirit. saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and a half a time, from the face of the serpent. Hey! A new note. It's been folded carefully in the corner of this page. The writing, it, it, it's not my mother's. S. I found the book in your effects. I've concealed it where no one can get their hands on it. I can assure you, awaiting your instructions, I will hear your reply like he who hears the angel. Hears the angel? What does that mean? Oh, it's probably the place where she was expecting to get the location of the next note. St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and 
the play of colors too. Paul facing an ordeal, the curtains of his illusions being raised and receives the light from his savior. St. Paul is the only saint to be presented twice in these paintings, contrary to the other apostles. How come? This painting has been hanging here for a long time. A lot of dust is built up on it. Well, a finger has drawn a number in the thin layer of dust. I can read the number four. Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and the play of colors, too. Paul facing an ordeal, the curtains of his illusions being raised, and receives the light from his savior. whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who think only of earthly things. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. These little characters are engraved on the chest of drawers under the urn. It's a sentence in Hebrew. No, nothing of value here. There are finger marks, deliberately drawn in the dust. Eight in all. It's too cumbersome for me to unhook here, but judging by the dust, it hasn't been moved for months, if not years. Of St. Mark from the collection of the apostles by 
Guido Rini. There's nothing worth noticing here. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Rini. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. Finally, brethren. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. I guess I'll just come back later. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. Painted by Guido Rini. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds, and in defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. Do all things without murmurings and disputes. Thou hast put all things under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Here's a message. There are some complications. Indeed, the Prussian is insistent. What's happening at your end? Do you need help? If tonight is not possible, let's see tomorrow evening, in the south room, where we reviewed the situation. When Paul understood that only the axe counted, he went back on his tracks. I await your confirmation to his left in the company of the pilgrims that have joined him. Yeah, this last comment is about their code. I should find new pilgrims near Paul. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And behold, 
there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jerus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And so many came and couldn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they were made ready, he fell into a trance. Hey, there's a note here, a message from mother in reply to E. We must leave urgently, but first I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare. Watch out for Volner. He figured out I was avoiding him. A lay suspicion. See you tomorrow evening. Stand ready. For now, let's cease all communication until we meet. Take care of yourself. I suppose this must be the last message. What happened afterward? If it's what I suspect, I, I fear the worst. What did Mother mean by, I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare? I must go beyond the nightmare. What does she mean by that? I'm guessing it's a metaphor. I need to figure out what this means. Mortimer's getting his guests together. I ought to join them so I don't look suspicious. time I went back and joined everyone in the small salon. 